Hello, my name is Robert Papp. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I've been a NASCAR fan since the 1989 Daytona 500. My question for Kyle Petty is, are there any stories you have of your grandfather, Lee Petty, and did he ever help you out in your racing career at all, or just any other fun stories about him? Uh, thanks for taking my question, and have a great day. Okay, Robert, here's, so here's, here's what I got. I'm, I'm going to tell you this one. So my granddad, from the time when he wrecked, um, he, he wore a certain kind of shoe, a certain kind of shoe. They were fry boots. Um, and even when he passed away, he still had like, um, golly, man, he had like five or six pair of brand new fry boots because he just ordered like 10 or 15 pair at a time. I mean, they're, they're never going to be cheaper than they are today. You, you know what I mean? So I'm going to wear them. This is what I wear. Wore the same kind of boots. When you see photos of him. So we were coming back from Pocono. I think Pocono one night. I was driving the van. I was a crew. My dad or my granddad was sitting up front. And so we stopped. We stopped somewhere at a rest area or something. And, and uh, we were having this little bit of this conversation earlier. He didn't make it all the way into the restroom to go to the bathroom. It was two thirty, three o'clock in the morning. He just went out on the yard there. So um, my kind of guy. Yeah. So when we got so when we got back home, and I dropped him at his house, he couldn't find one of his shoes. Couldn't find one of his shoes. And um, at this time, he was buying them singles at a time. Sing, you know, a single pair at a time. So the next day, he come down to the shop, and he had on tennis shoes. And the only thing that looks stranger than Lee Petty in tennis shoes is Richard Petty in tennis shoes, because Richard Petty only wears boots, and when he puts on tennis shoes, he can't even walk. He can't, because there's no heel on them. Yeah. You know what I mean? He has yeah. to have tennis shoes with a heel on them. And we asked him, we all asked him where his shoes were, and he was like, oh, they, I'm having them fixed. I'm having them fixed. And then he just showed up with a brand new pair, and then he told us a story that, when he got out up there on the side of the road, he just kicked one of them out, he guessed, because he never saw it again. <laughs> so he had one good left shoe, and that's all he had left. So that's why he was in his tennis shoes. That's why he was in his tennis shoes. That reminds me of a story about my dad. His uncle had a um, saying that so-and-so didn't have enough sense to pour pee out of a boot. Yeah. that's. And when my dad was a kid, <laughs> he decided to put my uncle to the test. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's a family story. That's a family story. That's a good one. Now, speaking of Lee, Mike Hill. Okay. That Mike Hill. Yeah. Had a question. Mike evidently let you sit in the Mountain Dew car. On Mountain Dew, yeah. At Atlanta, he said, in 1982. And because of that, he got in a little bit of trouble with Junior <laughs> because of some sort of history that uh, Junior had with Lee. Listen, who didn't have history with Lee? But who didn't have history with Junior? <laughs> yeah, well, this right. is true. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. let's go back and forth here. So he, this is the funny part, and, and I will say this, is, is if you look at the evolution, and if Mike looks at the evolution, if you look at it, you know, you go back to Buck, Buck Baker, um, the Flocks, my granddad, Junior, all those guys, they just didn't like each other. Let's just be honest. They just didn't like each other. You know, because if if Buck won or if Junior won, you took food off Lee's table. If Lee won, he took food off Junior's table. You know what I mean? And that that's the way it was because that's what racing was about to those guys. They worked other jobs. They didn't just they weren't Lee Petty was the only race car driver. You know what yeah. I mean? At the time, but they took food away from each other. They took money away from each other. So they didn't like each other. Then you get Daddy and Kale and Bobby and Donnie and Leroy and Pearson, all those guys. They respected each other and tolerated each other. That, that's it. I, I'll give you toleration. You know what I mean? That, that's about all. Yeah. And now you got guys that go out to dinner with each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? And hang out all the time. So the evolution of what was a race car driver is, is totally different. But they just didn't like each other, you know, because um, it was honestly, you're taking, you're taking money out of my pocket. If you beat me, Steve Wade, you're taking money out of my pocket. So I don't like you. You know what I mean? It, it was that basic that basic an, an instinct. So, yeah, they never – I don't know why they didn't like each other. There's probably – I think my grandfather won – run, what, three or 400 races? There's probably three or 400 reasons they didn't like <laughs> each other. You, you know what I mean? So if, if you look at yeah. it, that's probably the main thing. All right, Rick Houston wanted to know – Oh, this has got to be a good one. <laughs> he never asked a decent question. <laughs> you had just turned nine years old when Apollo 11 landed yeah. on the moon. yeah. Is that something that you paid any attention yes, to? Yes, I did. Or was that something, was something else 
okay, did something Rick, else have your attention? That's, uh-huh. a very, that's a very Science Friday question. Um, so here's here, I, I tell you how much attention I paid to to the to to I didn't I not that I wanted to be an astronaut never yeah. I just wanted to be a race car driver, but I was convinced at ten years old that the reason that Chrysler came out with the Dodge Daytona and the Superbird was that cars were going to be flying before long. Okay, that's how close I tied that event to okay. what my dad did. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that event had such an impact on me, putting a man on the moon. Cars are surely going to fly in the next year or so. You know what I mean? We're not going to see cars on the road. We're going to see cars up in the air. And you're going to fly to school, and you're going to fly around a racetrack. Um, and that's why, to me, and, and I said this not long ago, I did a, did a show with my dad. That's why that Superbird is the Mount Everest of cars to me. You know what I mean? I'm not a car person. I tell people all the time, I'm a motorcycle guy. I love motorcycles. Because at 10 years old, you'd stood on Everest and looked down on all other cars. They were, they were never going to make an automobile yeah. that had that impact on my life that the Superbird did. Because with that sloped nose, think about think about it, man. We just come from a 67 Fury, a 68 Roadrunner, uh, the Torino. Um, you know, Ford made an attempt at the Talladega, you know, with that little, I'm going to put a little nose on this thing. And Chrysler came out with a wing. And it's like, oh, my gosh. A wings on this thing, and the nose looks like the spaceship, the, a space capsule. So for me, that was that was a huge event. Did you actually watch the landing? Oh yeah, well, I remember watching every all of it. Okay. You know what I mean? And and it's so funny because you watch it today, and the footage is so so grainy. Yeah, you know. And but in my mind, it's etched. It was in high def. Yeah, it, it was high def in my yeah. in my mind and in my memories. It is as clear as a day, you know, clear as a bell when he stepped off and and, and was standing on the moon and when yeah. he planted that flag. And then when they splashed down, man, you know, that I mean, it was like they're back. You know, I, I, listen, I'm getting chills thinking about it now because it was like, are they going to make it back? You know what I mean? They made it up there. Are they going to make it back? That was a big time. We don't even think about things like that now. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I don't think it has impact on kids like it, like it did on us. Kyle, what driver were you maddest at that you made up with the quickest? If okay. you did. So, so here's the, here's the thing. And Bill, and here's, here's the thing is at, at different times, I was probably incredibly mad at everybody. <laughs> I was mad at my dad on numerous occasions, <laughs> on numerous occasions. The, the, the thing is, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lot like my granddad. Okay. I'm a lot like Lee Petty in, in, in this situation where, is, you know, I was mad. I was mad at Rusty after, after an All Star race. Golly, man, I was mad at Ricky after a Martinsville race. Um, but I'm gonna go tell you that I'm mad. I'm not gonna text you. I'm not gonna tweet you. I'm not gonna send you a nice little card. You know what I mean? Like they do now. I'm gonna go tell you. And then, as far as I'm concerned, it's over. And my granddad had that incredible ability to get it off his chest, and then it was over with. He could come through our race shop, and if you were doing something that he didn't like, he may jump on you about doing it. And then he'd come back five minutes later and say, hey, want to go to lunch? And off to lunch, because in his mind, it, that was the past. That was five minutes ago. So for me, it's the same way. I don't, I don't think I ever raced against anybody that I got mad enough at that the next time they came up to lap me or the next time I came up to lap them or the next time we were racing door to door, did it ever enter my mind? I just wasn't that kind of, I, I didn't let that get in my way. I, I wasn't that kind of person. Mm-hmm. What's the maddest you've ever been in a race car? Um, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know because I couldn't, I'm, I'm that guy that can go from zero to a thousand, but back to zero in about two and a half seconds. So listen, I've been, cut me off, beat me. I was mad at Daryl when he wrecked the whole field down at Texas that one year. Um, that's Daryl Waltrip for y'all that don't know. I, I don't want to just, I, I don't want you to confuse him with anybody else. Um, so Spell was, it out. I, I was mad about, I was mad about that because I felt like I had a pretty good car, but I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know because even though I would go off on the radio and, and scream and stuff, I, there was, there was that pop off valve, you know what I mean? Where it just let the pressure off and then, then you were good again. It was let the pressure off and, and then you were, I never drove over my head when I was mad and I never drove. It wasn't that kind of, I'm going to chase that guy down and put him in the wall. I didn't, I, I wasn't that way. 
We talked to Mike Beam a couple of oh, weeks ago. Oh, I just got off the phone with Mike Beam. <laughs> oh, well, he might have warned you off. <laughs> uh, and he told us about the great Lone Star Beer Run oh, in Texas. Oh, my gosh. Back to Level Cross in the early 80s. Oh, my gosh, dude. Statute of Limitations is long since passed. How many cases did he say? I, I keep forgetting how many cases. He I, said I, I, he said 100 cases. Yeah, we so had, all I saw, we, we all had, I we saw had, was we had more than smoking the bandit. Okay, so I'm going to tell, <laughs> tell you we had more than 100. We, I, I think we had like three or 400, uh, to be honest <laughs> with you. Because here's what I know. We had a, we had a furniture trailer from Cliff Stewart because Cliff Stewart was running the 50 car. Morgan Shepard was driving it at the time. Um, had the line barriers working on it. It, it, a whole nother story. So I, I could go down that road. So we took two cars and a furniture trailer, Mike Beam and I, to Texas. And then we took our two trucks. And then we switched cars out. We ran Texas, switched cars out. Mike and I drove back to North Carolina and uh, dropped the truck off, then got on an airplane, flew, and ran Riverside. Now, that was our, our deal. We drew that straw. So, you know... You had Urban Cowboy, man. You had all these places, and they were Lone Star Beer. Pooh, yeah. <laughs> so we were, we paid, I think we paid $35, $25, $35. I don't know, a case. I think because you had a, you had a, um, refundable bottles at the time. I mean, you had, a, so we had, a, we, so we bought these cases of beer, and we put them down the sides of the trailer in front of the cars, okay, <laughs> Put some in the cars. I mean, we had we had beer everywhere. I, I can't. I remember it took us forever to load all this beer. I'm just going to tell you that. So we got in the truck. And we're driving home. Now, what was the plan to do with it? Sell it. What do okay. you think? Right. We weren't okay. just going to drink all this beer. <laughs> you can't drink profit, man. You don't want to do that. We were going to sell this stuff because there was there was a country bar up the road from from where we were at down in Level Cross, and we were going to sell it because it was Lone Star Long Necks, the same thing you had seen. You know that you'd seen on, on Urban Cowboy with Deborah Winger and and all. I mean, that, this was a deal, man. I mean, this was they got a mechanical bull. Get you get you a Lone Star beer. You can get her done. So we got to Birmingham. We we were making you know we were making good time. We get to Birmingham. And we think okay, let's let's go see Donnie. We're gonna go see Donnie Allison. He's in the hospital. He had wrecked at the end of May. If you remember, he had wrecked at Charlotte. And he was in the hospital in Birmingham. So we decided we'd stop and see Donnie because uh, I love Donnie. And I always did like Donnie. So we got this big 18-wheel truck, and we're trying to park it in a parking lot at a hospital. Okay? <laughs> in a park. I mean, we're going through the, the, the arms coming up, and we're driving this 18-wheel. We don't have wings. I don't even have a license to drive this thing. That's the best part. We didn't have a CDL to drive this thing. So we stop, and we're on a little bit of a hill, and we walk around. And there's beer running out of the back of the truck. <laughs> yeah. Okay? So we open the back doors of the truck, and <laughs> the back car has broken loose, and it's just jammed. You know, it's boom, boom, boom. Now, the only thing that saved the front car and the back car, where we had so many cases of beer packed between them, that it couldn't go but like this. Because yeah. there, there were beer, there was beer cases behind them, too, and it had just crushed the beer. You oh. know what I mean? There was beer on the ceiling. <laughs> there was beer on the car. You know, it looked like celebrate, but it was just hanging from the ceiling. You know how like like stalactites and stalagmites. You know, yeah, it's like yeah. it's just hanging everywhere. You know, so we tied the car back down. We tied the car back down and went in to see Donnie. We smelled like beer when we walked in because we had, we had the car tied up. So we tied the car back down and uh, went in to see Donnie and then drove home. And I think we, I think we lost. I think in the in the transaction we lost about. 60 or 70 cases of beer. I don't know. This story just keeps changing in my mind, but uh, we lost a bunch of beer. That's because the best of that. kind of story. But, 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 but <laughs> we got home, and we still made, off of what we made, off of what we hauled, we still made six, 700 bucks, um, which is good for us. I mean, we were just, it, yeah. it wasn't like we were going to make $10,000. It wasn't that kind of Smokey and the Bandit run. I mean, we were just, it was a few hundred cases of beer that you were going to double your profit on, and that was going to be about it. So it was, uh, it was good, man. That was crazy. I was... It was 80, that had to be what, 81? 81, I was driving a Buick, 81. Yeah. I was just just turned 21 years old, just turned 21 years old and bringing beer back from Texas. Well, the best part of the story, though, to me was he said that once you got back to Level Cross, <laughs> you then had to hide it from Miss Elizabeth. Yeah, we had to hide it in the back building. We had to hide it, we had to hide it in the back building. And th the best part is we had to hide it in the back building before we could get on an airplane and leave. We couldn't just leave it in the car. 
I mean, we couldn't just leave it in the truck. You know what I mean? So we hit it in the, in the very, very back building where the tires were, if, if I remember correct. Um, the, the old tire barn down there that we used to stack tires and stuff in. And it was cool. It was because you didn't want tires to get hot and cold, hot and cold, because they'd cycle almost. So you keep them cool. So we hit it down there. Um, and, um, <laughs> and then we had to sell it. Then we had to get it out of there at night. And then the next race that we went to with that car, my dad come in the first time and he said, this car smells like beer. It smells like beer. Cause it I got don't know. Because it got hot, you know, and beer, Honest, was, dad. beer was still running. <laughs> there was still stuff running out from under the dash. I mean, we, we cleaned them up and squirted them off as good as you could. But I promise you, those cars smelled like beer for at least a couple of races until they until they got a couple more races on Did them. Did you sell that beer to that one tavern? <laughs> no, we sold it to uh, six or seven. Okay. Six or seven. And, I, and you're being very generous to call it a tavern. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your career as a bootlegger. That was it, man. That was it. We hauled too. We hauled too. Hi, Kyle. My name is Scott Cole from Lexington, Kentucky. Thanks for taking these questions, and I've really admired you over the years for many reasons I can't list here. But I have a question about Tim Richmond. Can you tell us the wildest story about Tim Richmond that you've never told publicly? And I'm sure that Rick can censor out anything that he needs to. Thank you and take care. You know what? Okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Um, my, I, too many that you can't talk about, so I will say that. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to tell you this. So Tim and I went to a, to a movie in, um, in Dover, Delaware. Okay? And, and this is a true story. And this is when I knew that he was a god. Okay? <laughs> uh, and I will say that. So we're watching this movie. And I don't know why we even went to this movie. Um, was it Woman in Red or some, I can't? I don't even remember the name of it. Anyhow, there's. I wish I could remember. Golly, I wish I could remember. But anyhow, there's this this girl on the screen, and she's doing all this. She's the girl. She's like the girl in red, and it's these kids, and they keep seeing this girl, you know. And they, it's like it's kind of like watching. Um, National Lampoon Vacation, yeah. you know, where she drives up in the Ferrari, and, yeah. and he's like. <laughs> you know, so it's like Rich, Richmond is the same way. He's just mesmerized by this girl, and we're walking out, and he's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out with her," and I'm like, "Yeah, sure you are," and it wasn't a month. He went out with her. He went out with this chick. You know what I mean? And she was like a movie. She's a movie yeah. star. Yeah. I, I wish I could. I swear, I wish I could remember that. I know who but, you're talking but, about. Yeah, but I mean, he went out with this chick, and it's like, who do you sit in a theater with? that sees somebody on the screen and says, yeah, I'm going to go out with them. And they do it. You know what I mean? That's, that's the first time that I, that I realized that he, we just played, we just played in the, in, at this realm, and he, was, he played on a different level. You know what I mean? He, 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 had, he had bad game, man. He was so, and, he, and, and that, that, that would probably be, that's when I knew. I mean, he was an incredible race car driver. I, I've said it a million times. I've been very, very blessed to see people come through this sport who have natural talent. You know what I mean? And some people who have to work at their talent and are, and are still great race car drivers. Um, but he had the most natural talent of anybody I've ever seen. I think Kyle Busch gets close, but not, as, not Tim Richmond level. Tim Richmond's a different level. That's a totally different level. I've said the same thing about Julia Roberts for years. Yeah, how'd that work out for you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's a big, it's a big jump, isn't it? I've it's said a the big same jump. thing about Julia Roberts for years. It's a big jump, man. Hey, Kyle. Scott Boys here. When are we going to see the return of the Yanni hair at the track, especially on the NBC broadcast? <laughs> oh, my gosh, man. We're not going to see a return to that. Um, <laughs> so it's all falling out now. That's why I wear a hat. Uh, the, the Yanni stuff, I, you know, it, it's, it's, so it's, you know, I, I, that started like, I, I wish you could see my fifth grade high school or fifth grade picture. My hair was long and it was all down in my eyes. And my mom made me cut my hair and go and go have my picture taken again, my photo taken again. So all through school, she, oh, short hair, short hair. She made me cut my hair, cut my hair, cut my hair until I got to high school. And then she let, let it be a little longer. So then I got out and I drove for the Wood Brothers and I felt like I needed to have stay kind of clean. Um, but then I went to drive for Felix and it was no holes barred at that point in time. But then, <laughs> then he said, "Get your hair cut." So I got my hair cut, you know, and um, I went to Talladega and broke my leg. Mm -hmm. So Felix, being from Cuba, 
um, and, and having some superstition, I played on that superstition. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not cutting my hair again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cut your hair, break your leg. That's the way it works. A logical connection for me. <laughs> so that's where the Yanni look and the Yanni yeah. years came from was yeah. um, just being lazy, being lazy. Kyle, while listening to the Scene Vault podcast over the years, I've heard a lot of drivers talk about rides or offers that they did not take or, or turn down. What ride were you offered that you wish you had taken? None, none. Really? I, no, I never, I, ne- I don't think I was ever, I never went looking for a ride and never, I, I, and, and, and I didn't grow up that way. So let, let's go, I think, I think a lot of that has to do with, um, I just assumed when I started driving, I was going to drive for my family yeah. forever. Yeah. Okay. And then we ran out of money, you know, and, and my dad left, so he left me there. And then the opportunity came up with the Wood Brothers. Um, and I told Eddie, I've told this story, I told Eddie and them. When I got there, I'm like, look, I'm I'm not an idiot. I'm the only one here that doesn't have a last name Wood. You know what I mean? So so when it gets time to go, I know I'm the one that's going to be going out the door. So Eddie, Eddie, we had a great relationship, still do. I love those guys more than they are a family to me. Um, but when we parted ways, I didn't have anything. Um, I called Rick, talked to Rick a little bit, and he had that test team, and it turned into a team that he sold Felix, and I went to drive for Felix. And, you know, when, when I left Felix – my whole goal was to to start a team for Adam. Okay. Okay. Because my granddad had given my dad a place to race. My dad had given me a place to race, and I was driving for Felix. I couldn't give Adam a place to race. So my whole goal was to to do. So I, it wasn't like I was like, oh, I'm gonna go drive for Junior Johnson or Robert Yates or Bud Moore, because that would that was the same thing. So I I was never in a position that I felt like I, I want to go get that ride. The grass was never greener for me. You know what I mean? I was content where I was at. Yeah. You just make the most out of where you're at, and you go from there. Um, do you know a guy by the name of Joe Monfiletto? Yeah, yeah, okay, from so, upstate New York. Okay, so you do know him. Yeah, okay. he rides right. motorcycles with right, us. Cool. Uh, Joe Monfiletto from New I'm York. I'm not going to answer his question if that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, Joe said that uh, to say hello from he and Colleen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. And wanted, just with him in September, yes, <laughs> at the homestead. And wanted to know if you have any plans to write another book. Now, you actually have one coming out. Don't have you? one coming out. Yes, I do. Um, really? You, you didn't get me and Steve to help write it. No, 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 no. That's no, okay. No, no. Yeah. That's, that's well, fine. You know what? That's it's fine. a crazy story. Crazy story. Um, and and I, will, I will say this, and I have said it before. If I could be, if I could have been anything other than a race car driver, I would have wanted to be a writer. But I can't write. You know what I mean? But I, but I mean, I, I like to try it yeah. because I am fascinated by guys like you who can take the written word and paint a picture. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's why I play music and write songs yeah. because that's that's about my attention span. You know, about <laughs> yeah. verse, verse, chorus, verse, verse, chorus, bridge. I'm good. I've, I've, if I can't tell my story in that. But so during the pandemic, there was so much going on or there was nothing going on that it was like, man, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So I just started writing down, I sat down and started writing down stories of things that I could remember, like the beer story, like stuff. This beer story is not in the book, I will say that. <laughs> but just different stories and things that have happened to me along, along my life from my grandparents, my mom's parents, my dad's parents, growing up in Level Cross, my Uncle Randy being killed uh, at Talladega, um, and what he meant to me, and you know my mom and Adam, and just tied it like that so it's it is um and and about the sport and how the sport has changed you know and and you know it's it's an ever-changing sport it is it is um it keeps moving around so you, and that that's why it doesn't die you know what i mean because it keeps it changes to be whatever it needs to be it's a chameleon yeah, yeah you know what i mean yeah, and that's that's yeah. the way i describe it it's a chameleon but it that's what it's about and and um uh ellis hennigan who wrote michael's book who helped michael I got in touch, got put in touch with him, and he kind of rewrote, wrote most of it, put it back together, did everything he had to do, yeah. you know, to to make some semblance out of it. So it comes out in um, comes out in August. I think you can get it on, you can pre buy it on Amazon. Which what can't you buy on Amazon? Amazon and uh, Barnes and Noble, anywhere you get books, books a million, you yeah. can pre yeah. you can pre order. Um, but yeah, it was it came out pretty decent. I, I was I'm pretty pretty pleased with it, pretty proud of it. Yeah, speaking of, let me let me can I ask Steve a question? Just sure. one question, real quick. 
Okay, so speaking of how the sport changes and speaking of writers and speaking of stuff, so we used to have a, we used to have a thing at um, where my dad, where we put the cars together, where we assembled the cars. And there was a wall and, and it was just to the left of where, it's where we kept all the parts so in that one bay. And on that wall, when, when you'd win races, we'd come in and they'd put, they'd tack up the flag you know, because you get the flag, but those were nice flags. I mean, they had the embroidery 76, you know, you know on the ball on it and all that stuff. Right in the middle of that was a poster, um, and it was framed, and it was a nice poster, but it was always hung in the middle, just like, just like this photo or picture here, with all these winning flags around it from whatever year we raced. And it was, I believe it was the Knights of the Mystic Sea. <laughs> <laughs> And it hung on that wall. So please, Steve Wade, explain to, to me what the Knights of the Mystic Sea were. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> it started by Joe Whitlock okay. years ago. Tom and I were staying in a motel called the Mystic Sea Motel. <laughs> nice nice place. I'm not sure I like where this nice is Nice place. No, it's, it's no longer that, but in any case. <laughs> Joe found out about it, and he said, you guys are the Knights of the Mystic Sea. Now, that's a takeoff on Amos and Andy. Yes, yes. They were the Mystic Knights of the Sea. <laughs> yes. Well, we thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So I said, we got to do something about this. So we sat and th- talked about it, and finally, we were pretty well tanked up, and so walked outside <laughs> the hotel door down there, and I said, got an idea. Let's pose like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid <laughs> and take a picture. I know. I know. Okay. I love that poster. I love that poster. I love it. Bro. Okay. But we got to dress it up a little bit. So we put on our suits, leisure suits. Leisure then. suits, man. Leisure. That's exactly right. And threw a bunch of trash. <laughs> That's, it always looked like you were on a trash dump to me. That's what I remember. I thought you'd just gone to the garbage dump to take the picture. That's what I didn't understand. So we sat and had the picture taken. And when we got a hold of the picture, I said, this is great. we got to do something with this. So I showed it to T. Wayne yeah. Robinson. And he forked over $500 of Winston's money <laughs> to, to, print to print 500 the poster. posters. Yes. Yep. So we got those posters and said, this is Wow. So we just took them. I thought the first track we went to back was at Charlotte. And we took them down in the garage area and just started handing them out. Yeah. And next thing we knew, they were in the back of trailers. Yes. All over. Harry Hyde had one. Y'all had one. We had one. Ours was framed, man. Ours was framed. We took the time to frame ours. That's the best part about it. We went to North Wilkesboro (laughs) and we went to a tavern in North (laughs) Wilkesboro. And. I just brought him in for the heck of it, and I asked the bartender, can you put this on the wall? He did. And he said, wow, everybody in the tavern won the poster. <laughs> they oh, thought, my gosh. Yeah, they, they thought they were seals and crawls. They, 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 <laughs> they thought they were a singing group. They thought they were a singing group. miles of people <laughs> thinking we were seals and crawls, yeah. all notes. That's it. They're oh, just another That's group. It. <laughs> One girl oh, asked us, oh, you know. Are you boys gospel yeah. groups? <laughs> no. No. No, no, no. No, no, that's, uh, that's good. That's good, man. I just we, had, to, I had to bring that up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. We, had to, yeah. we gave away. Yeah, that to, was good, man. We had to print another 500 of them. Yeah, that was good. Do you have any posters left? No. No, I, there's I, no I, way, man. I got one that's framed. Now, with today's technology, you can take it out of the frame and yeah. make them all over make, it. Yeah, shoot you. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Make a T-shirt out of it would be okay. better. Okay. All right. I don't know where okay, to go. Sorry, sorry. I don't know where to go from yeah, we, now. We off, uh, from sorry. here. Well, let's, <laughs> let's just pretend. For me. <laughs> let's just pretend. Friend, Richard Petty sent in a question to ask for you to answer. Now, what would be that question? And what would be your answer? Okay, Richard Petty would send in a question. His question would be When are you going to pay me back for all the cars you wrecked? <laughs> <laughs> and my answer would be never, never. That that would have to be my answer. You know what I mean? <laughs> that would that, that I don't know what he would ask me. I've already hey, spent we, my inheritance. So 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 listen. <laughs> I, I have to tell you. That. So this is this is a and and on a sad note, my my aunt Lee passed away this past this past week. She was ninety nine years old. She's my was my grandmother 
Petty, her last sibling. So that was my dad's last aunt. And I, we laugh about this because um, her, her, her granddaughter stood up and, and talked at, at the funeral, and we laughed about some of the things after, uh, remembering Aunt Lee and remembering grandmother, and then remembering Granddaddy Petty and, and my dad. They come from, their last name was Tombs. And we said they must get the Tombs handbook when they're born on how they react to things because Aunt Lee was in, involved in the, in the Salisbury Symphony and, and heavily involved in Rowan County and the school system and stuff and uh, for forever. Um, and so I played, I, a couple of years ago, I got to play some songs with the symphony, uh, play a couple of my songs with, with the Salisbury Symphony, and it was incredibly cool. So when it was over with, she said, um, I, I went to, she was sitting in the audience and I said, she said, I enjoyed that. And I said, did I do good? And she said, I enjoyed that. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and that's the tomb's handbook. They never tell you that you do good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's, it's, it's like, it's like it, that was a pretty good race. Yeah, I won by six laps. Like I said, it was a pretty good race. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's, it's not, that was a great race. Nothing is good. Nothing is great. It's just, that's the slide compliment. You know what I mean? And that's as far as you get, so... Yeah, the ultimate it. slide compliment for a rider is invariably we will see somebody and they'll say, man, I saw a story of yours the other day and it was really good. Well, which one was it? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It I was know. such a good <laughs> yeah. story and it made such now a big they impression. Remember. Yeah, that's it. They, they didn't know what it was about. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That, that happens all the time. I know what that's about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Kyle. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, my question is, what was the atmosphere like leading up to the 1992 Hooters 500? You were one of the major players in the championship battle that year. In my opinion, it's the greatest race of all time. I was wondering like, what the buildup was like headed into that race. And do you consider that to be the greatest race in NASCAR history? Thank you. You know, so honestly, um, this, this, is, this is what I – so for me – for me, that race was more about my dad's last race, okay? Because it was, it was Winston, it was NASCAR's opportunity to say, we've run all year and we got five guys who have a shot at champ. They didn't have five guys. Yeah. They had three, outside four. No way, five. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there was that, actually yeah. six. Yeah, but but but, <laughs> yeah, but you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? I mean, yeah. it, it was that kind of yeah. thing. So that was I looked at that. I looked at all that hype for for the championship part. That really the guys who sh who who it was Allen. Uh, for me, it was Allen, Davey, and and Bill. Yeah. Those were the guys. Yeah. Those were the guys that that should. If one of those guys did not come out of there with the championship. It was a travesty of justice yeah. Yeah, because they, they were the guys. So it was about my dad because, you know, I, I go back to – and I, I remember going into that race thinking, man, I remember going to Greenville Pickens when I was in the second grade with, with Dennis MacArthur, a kid that went to school with me. And I thought in the second grade, I thought everybody's dad had a race car. I didn't know everybody didn't have race cars, you know what I mean? I remember going to Riverside and riding in a truck, and I remember – and you, you just start – clicking off races that you remember when you were a kid and, and remembering, you know, and then all of a sudden that's going to end the day. You know I mean that you're at the end of the line for, for him. And, and I also, I, I have to say from, from a son's perspective and from perspective, I was a little bit worried because, um, and, and because he's, So I, I, I guess, and this is, I, I guess this is why it was never a great race car driver, is I drove a race car, but driving a race car wasn't who I was. Yeah. Okay, Richard Page drove a race car, and driving a race car was who he was. That, that was it. You know what I mean? Bear Bryant coached football. Coaching football, that's who he was. And when Bear Bryant quit coaching football, he just sat down in a chair and passed away because he couldn't, he couldn't be who he was anymore. So I, I was a little worried at that time and had gotten worried that – Rich Page is just going to sit down in a chair somewhere. You know what I mean? Um, but I should have known better than that. But I, I think that was the big part for me was my sisters were there. Everybody was there. You know what I mean? And, and in hindsight, you look back on that one race. You know, and, and I think that's, that's, why, that's why 
runs up my rear end six miles when everybody wants to overheight things. Um, and today, I mean, everything has to be the biggest, the best. The way, you know, you don't know until you look back on it a lot of times. You know it's an event, but you don't know how big an event. You know, who knew that that would be, that championship would come down to one extra lap led or one, one extra point. Who knew that that would be Jeff Gordon's first race and what Jeff Gordon would become? You know what I mean? Who knew what that – so many different layers of that onion was packed in? And you look at that race, and you have to look at that race as, as, as a – that's one of those races that you, you look – change the sport. Change the sport in a lot of ways. Last time, an independent – and listen, I, I'm so sorry to say this. We can say Tony Stewart won it as an owner. Alan Kowicki's the last guy to win it as an owner. Okay. Alan Kowicki's the guy. <clears throat> End of conversation. Yeah. Uh, and that's not a knock against Tony, but Alan Kowicki is the guy. And uh, because this model changed. So he won in a different model. Um, but you look at that so much. The, the sport changed direction that day. It changed direction. It was like Richard Petty was the end of that era. And Jeff Gordon was the beginning of the new. And Earnhardt's the bridge that carried it on a little bit longer. But it was just the end. It was the end of racing as I knew it. You know what I mean? As, as I had grown up with it. That was the end. 92, the Atlanta Hooters 500 was the end of racing as I had grown up with it. It became a different sport. So um, I, I think it was more for us, it was more personal. Even though there were 10 million people around everywhere, it seemed like. And if you, funny, if you hear it today, if you, if you, if you, there, there, there are two races in the history of, of this sport, and maybe maybe a few more if you're a Jeff Gordon fan. But um, if you're a Richard Petty fan, there's two races um, that they had to at least had 10 million people at. The Hooters 500, <laughs> okay, because everybody was there. Yeah. Everybody was there if you talk to him. And the very first race he ran in Canada. There had to be there had to be that many people that, that wow, there. Okay. I saw him run his first race. <laughs> well, it was in Canada, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, I was there. Yeah, I was yeah. there. Yeah, I've never left the country, but I was in Canada when he <laughs> ran his first race. So, hey Kyle, it is Matt Miles. I am from Palmerton, Pennsylvania. Question I have for you, Kyle, is coming down this area, the Long Pond Straightaway, 1993 Champion Spark Plug 500, on your way to victory. Some crazy lunatic jumped right in front of you. Wanted to ask you, what sort of crazy things have you ever had happen here in a race car that you could just possibly say, can you believe it or not? That was crazy. Yeah. That was, that was, you know, okay. Did you actually see him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you yeah. kidding okay. me? Are you, so here's, here's the thing. If you, if you can, if you get, if you ever get a chance to watch the, watch the footage, Davey and I come up off turn one, and as soon as I level off, as, as soon as we come up, I, as I start off, you can see my hand waving like this, back and forth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Back and yeah. forth like this. And Davey is, is behind. He's not right up on me, but he's behind enough. He peeks out, and then you see, you see both cars do this. They set down on their front yeah. ends where we kind of drag the brakes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Because you don't know which way the guy's going. You know what I mean? It's like... It's like when you're driving through this neighborhood out here behind us. Yeah. When you see a squirrel, you don't know whether he's going left and right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't know. So what are you going to do? You know what I mean? And you don't have time to slow down, so what are you going to do? So um, you just hope he chooses the right way, and this guy chose the right way. He, he chose the, the, to go outside. I don't and, think and I, he was choosing anything. I think it, he was just on autopilot. We, we kind of we forced him because we went low this way anyhow. You know, we kind of come down. But, um, and you guys know it because you've been to Pocono enough. There's always wildlife on that racetrack. Oh, yeah. There's deer. Yeah. There's groundhogs. Yeah. There, there is always something on that racetrack, and it always was. Um, it was crazy, man. You go up there during Ted. Neil Bonnet hit a deer one day. God, that's the ugliest thing I ever seen. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it came. That deer came in inside the ductwork right in front of his radio. It just went through the front of that that slope nose Monte Carlo through that little opening that was about this big, yeah. and it just, whoosh, and it was just packed. Right yeah. in the rate. They just took all the duck work out and threw it away with the, with the deer still in it. I mean, it was nice. it was terrible. But, I mean, it was it was like, and y'all know, it was just common to have wildlife, yeah. just not two-legged wildlife. <laughs> you also got out of the car one year after winning at Pocono, and you videoed. Yeah. The same. Do you still have that video? Still have the video. Still have the video. 
Um, that was kind of crazy. Austin and I, um, he had gone up there with me, and we had just videoed some stuff. We'd been on – that was one of our original motorcycle rides. We'd been on the Hey Buddy Tour uh, with Eddie Gossage and Michael Drano yeah. and yeah. – and, um, Robin Pemberton. We'd, we'd been to L.L. Bean at 3 o'clock in the morning um, <laughs> just to go shopping. Because he said it was open 24 hours a day. We just wanted to see if it was. So we <laughs> rode up to Maine and, and, and went there and went to see Robin's family over in, uh, up, there, up in Sar- Saratoga Springs and some of that stuff. And then came back down and won that race. Um, and so I went down the front stretch and swung back up Pitt Road the wrong way. And, they, and Eddie Gossage handed me the video camera. So when I got out in Victory Lane, everybody else was taking pictures. I was just taking pictures <laughs> back at them. So, yeah, that, that was a pretty cool that, that was a pretty cool moment. Hey, Kyle, Daniel Vining here. I guess my question would be, uh, would your career as a broadcaster and an analyst, would you find that more rewarding than your driving career? And what aspect of your broadcast career do you find most rewarding being a member of the NASCAR media today? Thanks. Okay, so I I will answer that question this way. Um, (laughs) Neither one was a career. (laughs) I I don't look at it as... um, I'm I'm very fortunate. I I will say this, Steve. I'm I'm very fortunate that I never looked at working on race cars or driving race cars as a job. So if it wasn't a job, it couldn't be a career. You, you know what I mean? Okay. Right. You, you see what I mean? It, yeah. couldn't, it couldn't be a career because it's not a job. You just, I, Man, I just love going over to the racetrack and hanging out with Dale, our race shop, and hanging out with Dale and Wade and my Uncle Randy and Uncle Morris and Barry Dodson and guys. like when I Think of the people that came through there. Jake Elder was working there when I was born. Um, so many guys have come through there. Richie Bars taught me to weld. Um, so I just loved going to the race shop. And then naturally, I became a race car driver, and I just love driving a race car and still working on race cars with Mike Beam and, yeah. and Brad Hall and all those guys. And even when I went to drive for the Wood Brothers, I'd go to the shop, and, and they'd let me do stuff, you know, because I just couldn't break. And that's, that was a hard thing. When, when I quit driving, that was a hard thing not to have a shop to go to. Um, but then I started doing, doing the, the, the media stuff, and it's, it's, it's been fun. Um, and, and, and it's because it's kept me in that group of people. And that's all I care about. You know, you know what I mean? So I don't look at it as being work either because it's like my mom would, t- would tell you if she was here. I, when I was, was in the first grade, when, or before school started, we didn't have kindergarten back in the last century. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're, uh, so they, they would let a first grader bring a preschooler to school for one day, for one day. So I went with my cousin, my dad's cousin, Rodney Milliken. He was in the first grade, and I went with Rodney. And I got to school, and I thought, oh, my God, this is going to be the greatest thing in the world. Look at all these kids. Look at all these kids. This is going to be the greatest thing in the world. So, man, I, I started school, and I was like, this is fantastic. I got to the third grade, went to PTA with my mom, and we walked in, and – there were 28 kids in our class, 27 desks facing that way, one desk in the corner facing that way, <laughs> and that was my desk. <laughs> and my mom, my mom would tell that story all the time because she was on the school board because I talked all the time. I looked at school as one giant social event, one giant <laughs> social event, 12 years of social event. Yeah. That, that was school to me. And so doing this, doing the media stuff, that's all it is to me. It's just one giant social event. It just keeps moving from different place to different place. You get to talk to people. So I don't think I've ever had a career. I, I, I pride myself at being the age I am and never having a job. <laughs> I, I, you know what I mean? I drove for Felix, and Felix will tell you this. I drove for Felix, and when he built that shop up there at, at Lakeside Park, he built me an office. And I would not step into the office because stepping into the office implied that I had a job. If you have an office, you have a job, okay? So I would not – so they would have meetings in the office, and I would stand outside in the hall. And, 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 and they would close the door. I'd say, that's, that's good. I'm good. I'm not coming in. You know what I mean? But I would – I never stepped foot in the office at Felix Building. True. That's awesome. Hey, Kyle. My name is Ricky Boyd, and I'm from Houston, Alabama. My question for you is this. You scored the last top five finish for Petty Enterprises with a third place run in the 2007 Coca Cola 600. It was your last top five and your first since 1997. Can you talk about that night and what it meant to you to finish back in the top five again? 
Thanks. It was it, that was a fuel mileage race. Yeah. Yeah. We just out we fuel mileage. L- listen, and 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 I will say this. Uh, that that's what I remember. I think uh, JJ Yaley did Yaley run second. Uh, Mears won. I couldn't tell. Yeah, Mears won. Uh, Casey won. I think JJ. I think Yaley ran second I, for some reason. I think he did. Anyhow, we run third. Um, but you, and and it's, it's so funny because I, I watch TV now and I, and. If you're running 18th or 19th, it's not a gamble. It's not a gamble, yeah. okay? Because you're going to run 18th or 19th. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's kind of, we were 15th, 16th. We might have run as high as 11th or 12th. That's not a gamble. That's not a gamble to stay out and just feather and just make it last and do the best you can. Um, that's just, that's your last chance That's what it is. Last chance is not a gamble, you know? So, um that's what I remember about more than anything else. We had we had decent cars. Billy Welburn was a crew chief, and he made that call, and he did a great job. Um, but we were, you know, it, we were. It was just a different place for us. Um, so it, that's about all I really remember about it. It wasn't. I mean, it wasn't. wasn't wasn't anything spectacular. Did you know that the rotting was on the wall at Petty Enterprises at that point? So here's what happened. Okay, sorry, I hit the table, man. I, I, I knew I was going to hit it. Sound, <laughs> sound guy just sound guy just shot himself. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so he'll be fine. He'll be fine. So here's what happened. Okay, and th- this is this is, and and I can be honest now, where I couldn't be honest with myself then, but I can be honest with myself. I think we all get to a place where you look at yourself and you say, well, I, "Man, I was an ass." And that was, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I know it now. I, I wasn't then, but I am now, you know. So anyhow, I, um, I had looked at racing and looked at my whole life a little bit different, I guess. And, and y'all know that. And now I'll ask you a question a minute. Um, I got another one for you. So, right. <laughs> so, oh, so, um, so I started racing and raced with my dad. Okay. And then. So I raced with my dad, honestly, or against my dad, for from from the time I started in '79 until he quit in '92. You know, for 13 years, 12 or 13 years, I raced against my dad. Um, my dad only raced against his dad for a couple of years because Granddaddy had the accident yeah. at Daytona. Yeah. So the the responsibility and the onus of keeping the company alive was own Richard Petty, and he and Uncle Morris and, and Dale took that and, and built it into what Petty Enterprises was. So I had already made up my mind when I came along that when Adam came along, I wasn't going to race. I'd, I'd race a couple of years with him, and that was going to be it, and then I was going to quit. So in my mind, when Adam came along in 98, 97, 98, 99, running ASA and some some Bush stuff uh, at the time, um, then by the time he ran that first cup race – in, in 2000 and was going to go full-time in 2021. Mentally in my head, 21 was my, 2001 was my last year. Yeah. That, I wasn't going to race anymore. I wasn't going to race anymore. Um, and, and I would step out and put all the focus on him. When I, when I started racing, you know, my dad would run this car this week, and then I would get it the next week. You know, he'd run this motor this week, and then I would get it the next week. That's just the way financially that we ran the business. And because it was, even though people like to think it's a sport, it's a business. <laughs> okay, yeah. it's a business. Yeah. It's only a sport when they drop the green flag, and then it's the sports over with when they throw the checkered flag. But other than that, it's a business. So um, when Adam's accident happened, then I had, I was put in that situation where you had to drive, you have to keep going because you have to keep the sponsors and you have to keep the business alive. Um, and I, I think in 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 this in this sport and in a lot of things, once once you decide you're not going to do it anymore, you can't just flip that switch and say, "Well, I'm going to do it again." You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you know that's that's what's always sad to me about drivers that supposedly retire and then they come back. You know, you know, you, you, you just can't. There's something you lose something somewhere. So, and all athletes do. You lose it somewhere um, when you decide you're not going to play that that game again. So. Um, you know, I think those last, those last few years, the writing was on the wall from the sense that we didn't have a future. Okay. Adam was the future and we didn't have a future. We didn't have anything to shoot at. What were we shooting at? You know what I mean? 
we'd shot for Richard Petty, and then we'd shot for Kyle Petty, and now we were headed for... So once Adam's accident happened, who were we going to build something for? You know what I mean? I, I, my heart wasn't in it, yeah. you know, to build something for, for somebody else. Um, and, and my dad, his heart was in it just from the standpoint that he loves race cars. You know what I mean? But I didn't love them enough to, to keep yeah. doing that stuff. Yeah. So uh, I think the last probably five or six years, at least six or seven years I drove, you know, y'all could have probably gotten a car and done as good as me. Um, I was just taking up space in a lot of ways. I thought I was doing the best I could. Um, and I, and But looking back on it, you see I let a lot of people down because I probably they, they could have had a better driver. They could have had a better opportunity. The crews and guys could have to win races. Uh, so I probably let a lot of guys that work for me down. Not that I didn't have a good time. Not that I didn't enjoy driving a race car. And, and I still enjoy that's, – that's what I still dream about, sitting in a race car and driving it, not doing all the BS that you have to do to drive one. You know what I mean? You, you just want to be a driver. But, um, yeah, so that was um, – it's hard to look back on it and realize that you were the reason and you made a mistake. But you got to be honest with yourself on that part of it. So, uh, yeah, and answer the question, yeah, the writing was on the wall for – from about the time Adam's accident happened, the writing was on the wall for us. What did you love most about sitting in that race car? Driving. Just driving. Man, listen, when I was little, when I was little and I'd ride my bicycle around our little circle driveway, I was king of the hill. I was beating David Pearson. I could beat him. <laughs> I could beat Bobby Allison. Charlie Glotzbach, he was my man in that purple wing car. <laughs> Dow Chemical. Man, I love that purple. <laughs> I love that purple wing car, man. But, um, you know, those guys – and, and and you go to the racetrack. You know Bobby Isaac. You know had those tattoos on the back of his, um, at, on the back of his knuckles. And he used to tell me, "Don't ever do this to yourself, man." And he had done it with a with a straight pen and an inkwell when he was in school. He had tattooed, I think, "True and Love" or "Love and Hate," something. I, did, I, I, I did can, not know yeah, that. he had yeah. them on right wow. here, right across the back wow. of his thing. And he would tell me that, man. Yeah. And you know, got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, and he got his hair combed down straight, cut yeah. straight across. I mean, Bobby Isaac was bad to the bone i loved bobby and he drove that 71 jabe thomas driving that 20 i mean i just loved those guys but and i tell people this all the time when you when you're a little boy and you dream about being a race car driver or you're a little girl because we got to be pc when we say this um <laughs> you know if you if you dream yeah. about being yeah. a race car driver your dream is you're sitting in a seat and you're hanging on a steering wheel and you're trying to beat jeff gordon or you're trying to beat Jimmy Johnson, or you're trying to beat Kyle Larson. That's your dream. You don't dream about doing commercials. You don't dream, you know, about setting through board meetings. You don't dream about standing up and giving speeches to, to conventions and stuff. Yeah, that's not your dream, man. If, if that's your dream, then you want to be president of the United States. You don't want to be a race car driver. You know what I mean? You want to yeah. be something totally different. So, um, and that's the part, if you talk to all race car drivers, when they retire, that's the only part they can't do anymore. They can still do all the other BS stuff. You know what I mean? You just can't sit in the car and hang on to the wheel anymore. So that's that's the part I loved about it, liked sure. it more than anything. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. Uh-oh. So you were here when I came along. Yeah. Do you remember – what? what's the first time you remember – so I remember – we talked about Mike Beam earlier. There was a picture in the scene of me and Mike and some of us – and you guys referred to us as the lollipop gang because, and, and y'all brought us, I remember you brought us Tootsie Pops to take this photo of because everybody else in the garage area was in their 30s and 40s yeah. and we were like 19, 20, 21, 22. So what, do you remember the first time you interviewed me? What 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 I talk about? Do you, do you know? Besides girls. <laughs> yeah, I remember <laughs> the one time we did a one-on-one. -on -one. It was very early in your career. I seen you start. He didn't have a career. Yeah. Oh, I know. yeah. Very, very, <laughs> he not been listening. Very early when I showed up at the racetrack. Very yeah. early when I showed up at the racetrack. I can't help. It. I had one. <laughs> <laughs> we sat down. I would ask you. Uh, it was a Q and A, strictly a Q and A. Yeah. I'd ask you a question. You give me an answer. And uh, I remember several of the topics. The one I remember most <laughs> was I said. How about clothes? Oh, I love clothes, man. <laughs> and you went on for 15 minutes. That's it, baby. Yeah. That's it. I, at the time, I think uh, 
This is before, what was that? No no fear came. Oh, yeah, this no fear. Be, yeah. This is before that. Okay, before that. You were telling me what you were wearing, oh, what yeah. you liked, and that's the only racer I had met to that point that knew a thing <laughs> about men's clothing. <laughs> It's, it's, it, isn't it crazy the stages you go through in life yeah. when you think some things are important? And now, then, what uh, was your favorite style of clothes? What, what was, your, what I, was listen, your big draw? Look at how I am. I've never had any style. <laughs> okay? That, that's been my whole problem. I keep looking for a style. I, I tell people, so let me ask you this. How could I know how you're supposed to dress? When I grew up with a guy that wore sunglasses at midnight, a hat all the time, and cowboy boots. Yeah. And has never ridden a horse in his life. Although he thinks he's a cowboy. Okay, <laughs> and I've said this all the time. This this is a fascinating part about about our family. Honestly, if you if you brought my grandfather Petty in here and you did an interview with him, and you just asked him a bunch of questions, unless ten random questions, and then you brought Richard Petty in here and you asked him the same ten random questions, and you brought me in and then you brought Adam in, you wouldn't think we even knew each other. That's true. Man. Yeah, you wouldn't think we even knew. That's that, true. That has been the fascinating part about growing up I as always, a petty and in this family is that we were all allowed the space yeah. to be whoever we wanted to be, to, to be the person that we were. We didn't have to be a clone of the person that came before. Um, and, and that has been a blessing, more so much of a blessing, yeah. um, is that we, are all, we were all totally different. You were as far removed from your father yeah. as anybody could get. Could I get, said that yeah. more than and, <laughs> and not that you tried. You just you just naturally yeah. were. You know, and that, that's the deal. Because if you try to, if you try to do stuff like that, eventually you line back up somewhere. You know what I mean? Because you can't you can't fa- I had a friend um, who used to who who would who would go out to to bars at night and he would tell girls he was he was a stockbroker. Although he was a welder, uh, and he, he was a stockbroker, and he bought all these, he'd have a Wall Street Journal and stuff laying on his on stuff, and he'd say, "I can fake it for about a week, and then I just have to give up and just tell him what I do." You know what I mean? And, that, and that's the point. He could lie for about a week, so you can't fake it forever. Well, Wade, I'm jealous, man. He's asking you all kinds of questions. <laughs> <laughs> we go back away. Yeah, that's right, we man. He's been around a long time. We did a cover piece on him for Illustrate, and I stressed to. Uh, the people doing the story said, look, you got to understand this guy said this. This is not Richard Jr. No. This is a true renaissance man. <laughs> the yeah. guy, I mean, he, he, he knows about horses. <laughs> he played basketball and football. Uh, motorcycle expert, you know, not just a race car driver. Yeah. You're going to find that out. Yeah. I, listen, I, I, I've, said this, I, I've said this my whole life. This, this is not just – is. I'm, 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 I'm going to be that guy. I, I always wanted to be that guy um, that when my time comes and I'm in the nursing home and, and we're all sitting around in circles there and everybody's in, and talking and somebody will say, did you ever ride a bull? Yeah, I, I rode one. I, I, I did that. You know, did you ever Scott? Oh, yeah, yeah, that was me. Drive race car? Oh, yeah, that was me. Yeah, I don't want to say, no, I had a chance, but I didn't. You know what I mean? I had a chance, but I, I don't mind. The, the one thing that has that I think I got this more from my mom is, is, is I honestly, honestly, and I've had enough of it, so I honestly don't mind failing. I, I don't mind just falling flat on my face. I, I don't. As long as you try. As long as I try. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because, because if nothing else, you got a story. You know what I mean? If nothing else, you become a knight of the mystic sea. You've got a story. <laughs> that happened because... You know what I mean? You've, yeah. got, you've got a story. Yeah. And, and, you know, the story, man, the story lasts forever. You know what I mean? The, the, the trophy will tarnish eventually. But the story on how you got to, got, how you broke your arm or how something happened, man, that's, that's good. I, I, I hear people tell stories all the time, and I'm like, dang, I wish that was my story. I wish that was my story. I wish that had happened to me. <laughs> well, we heard Tony Liberati's story about riding a bull. Have you actually rode a bull? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, you knew I rode a bull. No. No. A real kidding? life bull. So let me tell you, dude. No. <laughs> so here's what happened. So here's what happened. I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm working for Speed. Uh, working for the Speed Channel, and Eddie Gossage runs Texas Motor Speedway, No Limits, Texas, and they're having a bull riding competition. I wanted to ride in the Ball of Death, 
the motorcycle. I still want to do that. I want to ride the motorcycle and, you know, where you ride the, the thing. But so we had set it up, and I was going to ride in the ball of death. I was going to fly out to Texas. This guy was going to show me how to do it. And then, boom, they call up, and the guy gets a sponsorship deal with Monster Energy. Well, I'm a Coke guy. Yeah. So I, I, I couldn't ride in the ball of death. So Eddie casually says, we're having a bull riding competition. I said, I'm in. And he said, you'll ride a bull? I said, I'll ride a bull. So we go down there, and I, I tell everybody what we're going to do, and the people at Speed are like, sure, yeah, yeah, you're going to do this. So I said, listen, I need off from about, we're on there from like 11 to 1. I said, I need off from quarter to 12 to quarter after. And I said, because I'm going to go down and, and no limits, I'm going to ride a bull. So you they said, what? I'm going to ride, I'm, <laughs> yeah, they, that's what they said. And I said, I'm going to ride a bull. And they said, okay, we'll send a camera down. Because I don't believe they believed it either. So I go down, and um, I go... I get off air, I go down, Eddie picks me up, they take me in, police escort, I get there, and I'm dressed kind of like this. I mean, I, I, got, a, I got a cowboy shirt on because Eddie gave me a cowboy shirt, so I got a cowboy <laughs> shirt on. So, And I, I went and bought, bought a mouthpiece. I went the night before to Dick's Sporting Good and bought a mouthpiece. Oh, safety first, yeah. absolutely. So I got there, and the guy said, um, this, uh, <laughs> this guy, uh, he said, you got, any, you, you got any boots? Nope. Here, let me get it. So he gave me a pair of boots. Um, Lusky's down there had made a pair of chaps for Eddie, so I put my chaps on. Uh, some guy loaned me a helmet, um, and so you, you, the 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 arena was a square arena. I had to walk around and come up the thing. So I'm coming up to where my bulls at, where the bulls at, and there's this kid sitting there. All these kids are about this tall too, because bull riders evidently are short because they, you need to be compact. I, they told me later I would be a better bronc rider than a bull rider, okay? Because you're tall guys, it, lo- it looks. So there's this kid sitting there, and he's got a paper bag, and he's taking a sip. And he said, you want some of this? And I said, nope. And he said, "Um, you ever done this before? And I said, nope. He said, you didn't practice? And he he couldn't have been 19, 20 years old. And I promise you, I looked straight at him, and I said, Evil Knievel never practiced. (laughs) There's no way this kid knew who Evil Knievel was, okay? <laughs> so I walked on I walked on down, and you're in this shoot, man. And this guy, I get down, he said, said you ready? I said, I'm ready. So they pull, pull, they push from the outside, they push the bull this way, and I get this leg down, and then they push the bull back, and I get, and every time the bull breathes, my legs are up against the, the railing. So he says, here's what I want you to do. Put your hand through, and he wrapped it. He said, but I'm not going to, don't wrap it around, he said, because... You don't want to get hung up. He said, just hold your hand, and when you need to come out, just open your hand up. You know what I mean? He said, hang on, but just open up. So I said, okay. So I'm all down, and I've got this thing all tightened down, you know, what I think's tight. I don't know what's tight, you know what I mean? And, and he's pulling, and he's always, and they knock on my helmet, and I, I looked up, and he said, you can get off now if you want to. Like, fly. Yeah. <laughs> he said, yeah. He said, you can get off now if you want to. And I said, what? And he said, oh, I've seen a lot of people get off at this point. He said, a lot of people don't make it to this point that say they're going to do it. And I said, no, I'm going to do it. And Was there ever a point where that little voice in the back of your head said, Kyle? I don't have that voice. Kyle. I I, I must not have that voice. Listen. Kyle, come in. (laughs) I was, this had to be, I was 52 or 53 years old when I did this. No kidding. Yeah. (laughs) This <laughs> honestly. Oh my god. So gosh. he said, Well just nod. <laughs> he said, just nod. And I said, Okay. And you can see it. So so I I nodded and the gate opened. I'm gonna tell you what. I've never been in a hurricane. Okay. And I've never rode a rocket ship, but that's a combination. But I've never done anything that violent in my life. That that it was just violent how quick that bull moved. He went up, I went up. He went down, I went down. He went up, I went up. He went down, I stayed up. <laughs> he started back up, I started down, and he hit me, and it was like being bounced on a trampoline when you're, <laughs> when you're the opposite. And I went this way, and, and I'm telling you, man, I hit the ground, and they told me, they said, when you hit the ground, start running. And I hit the ground right square on my back, and I looked up, and there were at least seven bulls. <laughs> okay, they were everywhere. They were spread out in front of me. I didn't know which way to go. And you can see it when I get up. I just start running backwards because I don't know which way to go. You know, what I mean, there's so many in front of me. I don't know which way to go. And a clown comes across in front of me, and um, he bull follows him, and they grab me and drag me over to the side, and and that was it. I lasted like 
eight point eight seconds, one point two seconds. <laughs> I mean, nothing, nothing, yeah, yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's not. A, that's not. But I got on it. I tried it. You know what I mean? And listen, that's one of those things, honestly, that there is no good outcome when you get on it. You're going. You're going. You're going down. You know what I mean? You're, there's no good. You don't just hop off and wave at the crowd. You know, I mean, that happens rarely, but uh, that wasn't going to happen. So it was crazy. I am perfectly content yeah, hearing crazy. you tell that story. Yeah, it was crazy. I will never experience that for myself, and I'm I'm good with that. Yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah, it's crazy. I'll, I'll show you a picture of it. it it's, not, it's not pretty. It's not pretty when I hit the ground or when I was looking at the bull. But, but again, it's like, yeah, you know what? If it... If if I could have got back up, if they had let me go try it again, I would have tried it again in that moment. Cause I, you you kind of like okay, now I see what it does. Now I see how it does. You know what I mean? It's like I'd give it one more shot. I wouldn't now. You know what I mean? I wouldn't now, cause <laughs> but I would have then. Uh, 